In the Basque country, bodyguards are in great demand. The number of victims killed by ETA terrorists has increased fourfold over recent years. Over a thousand bodyguards are employed in Spain, most in the Basque capital, San Sebastián. Two of these bodyguards died on duty last year. The bodyguards are prepared for an attack, but to escape from a bomb blast you need luck, as local councillor Jose Manuel Lizarga discovered. Here is where my brother always slept. He spent his holidays here, and this is the room where he slept since he was a child. The bulletproof glass, used for safety reasons, protects against any fragments from an explosion, such as shrapnel. But the glass bored into the wall itself. If someone had been sleeping here, he could tell us nothing more. Four and a half kilograms of dynamite exploded at the window of the ground floor house of Jose Manuel. He became the target for a terrorist attack because he is the local councillor in the city of Iran, close to the French border. Politicians who do not support the armed nationalists here are always targets. Over 1,000 people stand in association with ETA. They come from different backgrounds and political parties. The ETA terrorists want their own state for the Basque people, and for them the ends justify the means. They see the Spanish as an occupying power. Anyone who has views that are different from those of ETA risks becoming the target of intimidation. Our freedom of thought is restricted. It is dangerous to say what one thinks. There is fear, but it lessens. We will not give in. My husband has his views, but they don't listen. <laughs> Many say there is war here, but in war there are victims on both sides. Here there are only victims on one side. Handing out leaflets and talking to passers-by is a part of every normal election campaign. In the Basque country, though, few politicians dare to venture out without heavy protection. As a result, recruiting voters becomes farcical. 36-year-old Maria San Gil is the chairman of the Spanish People's Party in San Sebastian. The safety precautions are incredible. More armed companions than supporters surround the politicians. Representatives of the Spanish National Parties are particularly endangered during the elections in the Basque Country. Twenty-four hours a day, I must accept the fact that someone wants to kill me. And this has changed my life fundamentally. I must now avoid any routine. My routine is prescribed to me by others. The 36-year-old is quite clear that she is high on Etta's hit list. Etta's sympathizers don't stop at tactics of intimidation. They see her as a representation of Spanish power and try to disrupt her election campaign. Still, she refuses to give in to this anti-democratic activity. Barbara Duacop's husband was murdered by Etta in 1983. She still lives in the Basque country and today she is an MEP. If I open the fridge door and discover I've run out of milk, I cannot simply go to the store and buy another litre of milk. It's just not possible. Or if I want to buy new clothes, it's a real performance. I have to go with two men waiting outside the changing room for me. It's ridiculous. Jose Antonio is a socialist local councillor. He rarely has the freedom to walk with his own children. He does not want to place them in any unnecessary danger. But for the camera, he acts like he leads a normal family life. The fear of an assassination attempt is never taken lightly. Etta had committed 30 murders since they terminated the truce of 99. Anyone who publicly endorses a different opinion runs the risk of being shot. Although we all fear for our lives, this fear will not prevent us from expressing our opinions loudly and clearly. One man who has turned his back on the Basque country 
is the journalist Jose Maria Caleggia. One year ago, the Basque journalist became the victim of an ETA attack. He now lives in Madrid, but still in fear. What the terrorists want to achieve is a feeling of terror, so that journalists count to a hundred and think of their families before they write anything derogatory about them or their movement. The political wing of ETA tries to win votes with the promise of an improving quality of life. This hardly fits the campaign of hatred and violence which ETA have undertaken. They do not have to fear for their lives. We must work together in order to stop the continuation of the violent confrontation of the last few months. A solution to this conflict will not be achieved by bodyguards, but by a permanent peace. First though, everyone must talk together. This local council session demonstrates why dialogue is so difficult. The separatists insist on promoting their message in the Basque language. Their mounted photos of terrorists and ETA prisoners who have died are seen by many as a personal provocation. It's very difficult to maintain a normal relationship with your children if you're constantly being accompanied by four bodyguards. How can you spend a romantic evening in a restaurant with your partner if there are four men at the table next to you, constantly keeping watch? Of course, though, the bodyguards are a great help. The last victim died four days ago. Maria Gill's party colleague Manuel Jimenez Abad was shot on Sunday in Zaragoza in front of his son on an open road. He did not want bodyguards all around him and paid for the price with his life. Hundreds of thousands of Spaniards took to the streets in protest against this last ETA murder, but their voices are unlikely to be heard by the committed and violent nationalists of the Basque country.